Hello, I'm Katrina Ringham. I am the host of High Tea with me, and I am here with you today for this evening to talk to you about what I wish I had known before I set foot into business. So these are lessons that I've learned over my seven plus years of being an entrepreneur and working on my own and being my own boss. And it's wonderful. A wonderful experience is also some very hard work. And these are lessons that I wish people had informed me when I was going into business because I had people on the one side who were scared, oh, what if this doesn't work out? You could lose everything. And then I had people on the other side was like, go for it, you're bright. I knew you could do it and everything like that. And then I came into business and I had some great joys and some great pleasures and still do working my own business, but then there were some challenges. And number one, and I'm putting this number one because that is the first thing that came into my mind, is that people lie. Maybe intentionally, maybe not intentionally, but you have people in business who will lie. And I say, you have people who say, oh, I'll be there to support you. I'll support your endeavor, um, you know, and I'll help you to do what you need to do. And then once you step forth into business, these people completely disappear off the map. And I was in a service business. I was in a service business um, as far as doing career services, doing resume writing, things like that. And I had people who loved to come when the services were free. Those same people, be it friends, be it family, be it colleagues, soon as there was a price tag on it, they disappeared. All of a sudden, they did not see the value in the service that I was offering. Um, I, you know, people will, you know, send their friends to you and say, oh, she'll do it to you, for, give it to you for free because she provided my service. And they didn't tell them that I had started a business. When I did yours for free, I was not in business at all, wasn't even thinking about business. So you have that. You have people who um, will submit in orders and don't fulfill them, meaning that they don't pay for the service. Um, so I had to learn, I'm a service-based business. You don't get the service until I get my payment. Um, because I had services where I, I, you know, did service, I took maybe a portion of it, or maybe, you know, they said, oh, I need to have this service done and I need to have it done by the end of the week, but I don't get paid until the prior week. So me being who I am and being a coach at heart and wanting to help people, I was like, okay, you can pay me then. I'm still waiting on some people to pay me. Not really, but I'm just saying that money never manifested. So that's one thing you have to look out for and be mindful of that people will give falsehoods, you know, whatever the reasons are. So you want to make sure that you're aware of that. Also, two, you number two, you want to look at where your money is coming from, where your clientele is coming from. I, I spoke before about people who said that they would support me when I came into business. Well, I also had people who actually did support me uh, when I came into business. I had clientele because I was already doing career services. I was already coaching people academically and in their career and helping them write resumes and things like that. And so when I started a business, I had people who really was like, okay, I, I you know, what you have is valuable. Some of them had, had some of my services prior to me starting business. And now they were at the place where they were looking for another job or a promotion or something, or maybe they just wanted to refresh with some skills. And they actually came and actually paid my rate. Um, so not everyone will, will deceive you, but because I had this uh, bucket of, of clientele, I, I kind of really did not pay attention to where my business was coming from. I knew there was a market for it. Um, I knew it was a niche for but I was not paying attention to where they were coming from at first. And so guess what happens? When that well dried up, I found myself in a space trying to scramble around to find out where I would get clients from. I ended up doing some contracting for a while and things like that, and that wound up being pretty lucrative. But I had that space where there was a hole in the business. 
And so you want to look at that. You want to look at the numbers because people may lie, but the numbers do not. You want to look at uh, what your expenses are. When you first start a business, your expenses can be rather small, especially in the service industry that I'm in, can be rather small. But as you grow, your expenses grow. So you have to look at um, raising your price, how much you're going to raise your price to, what is the price for the industry? Is it something that is doable for you to raise the price where you won't price yourself out of the market? So you want to look at that. Um, a rule that I found um, sometime at the end of last year was the 90-10 rule. So the 90-10 rule is I will spend 90% of my marketing dollars on things that I know that works, that I know gets results, that I know people will respond to. And then 10% on experimenting. So going out and spending 10% and say, let me see if this works. So you want to do that. Um, I found it to be a great suggestion and I've gotten in uh, business and clientele with that 10% rule by testing the waters because that way you're you're not losing a whole lot if that experiment doesn't work but you have a chance to gain a whole lot if it does and you can put more dollars into that in the future so the 90 10 rule you want to make sure that you do that uh, another thing that i learned in business is that once you start a business Overnight, you will get people who have the magic key, the magic key for you to make six figures in 30 days or six figures in 90 days, or we can bring you in 200 times your clientele. I did not listen to most of those because anything, things that seem good to be true usually is. But what I did fall for is when I first started business, I went with someone who was supposed to be able to coach me in business for the area that I was doing. And I put out thousands of dollars for this coaching and to put the, the system together. I followed every step, but it just seemed like there was this big gap missing in the middle of it that stopped me from being able to complete what I was supposed to complete. And so we're in this group coaching session um, and I'm asking questions, questions about it, questions about it. And it's like, oh, I'll get back to you. Oh, well, Katrina, uh, email me offline and we'll talk about it. Well, the offline conversation is, oh, I can give you that if for coaching for $300 an hour. What? I just gave you thousands. And you're trying to get another 300 for a system that you said that I it was a complete system and I would be able to do that whole system and be able to run my business off of it. So you have to be careful for um, the poachers who will try to suck you dry that will look to try to see how much money you have in your pocket and they will keep gouging you and gouging you and gouging you until you have no more money. Me, once I spent that money and I did not get what I was promised, there was no more money. I did not go for coaching because I should be able to do what you said that I was supposed to do in this program. And again, wasted money, wasted time. I still have the pieces of this program that has the misses, that has pieces missing out of it because it was a ploy for me to buy into more services. The ironic part about it is if what you provided me did what you said, I may have even paid the $300 for continued coaching. But simply because it did not work, this being the, the trainer that I am, I am not going to waste any more money on you. So that is the, uh, the, the key. And, it, and it's about investment. 90% of your investment should be on something that works. Period. Point blank period. Because you're you're in business to make money. You're out here. You can bankrupt yourself. I I I had conversations with people who went bankrupt just because they invested in the wrong person who made them some promises. I thankfully was not bankrupt because of that. Um 
but it happens. So you want to make sure that you know that you know. And people sound convincing. They'll have testimonials and some of them will have videos and all kinds of things that'll say, look at what I did for Sally May and you know Fairyland USA, something like that. I'm not because I don't want to give a city or state or anything like that, but they'll give you this and this person will sound so convincing and oh I was down to my last dime and all of that, but you really, really, really want to look at what's going on and you want to look at the fine print of your contract to see if you will get your money back to see what they're really offering you. Um, I looked at the fine print of my contract and it was supposed to be that I was supposed to run my company and be able to build the building blocks of my company as a coaching practice um, from this, but I just chalked it up as paying what I was told later was called stupid tax. <laughs> and when you're in business, you're going to pay your share of it. Even with these tips, there's going to be something that comes up in your business that you just did not know. And later you're like, mm, I really wasted that money. And I wish I had known earlier not to do this because hindsight is always 2020. And you're going to have your testimonial that you're going to be able to tell someone else who's starting out in business to say, look, I wish I had known this. I wish somebody had told me this. And so you can do your own video <laughs> when you start uh, your business so you can tell people what you've learned. A big one for me, especially as I started growing, is handing things off can actually improve things in your business can save you time, can save you money, can save you stress. So what you want to be able to do is hire or subcontract, which is still hiring, but it's a different stage being an employee versus being a contractor. When you hire, hand things off, it makes things better. I am a coach. I am an executive coach. That is what I do well. That is what I thrive in. That's what people pay me for. What I am not is a creative person, a flyers person, a website developer, and the list can go on and on for the things that you need. So what I've learned is hire it out. Number one, you'll save a lot of time and frustration because I've tried to do things on my own, trying to save money. You'll save money because you won't have to redo it. You have that more professional polish because a professional, someone who does it is, is completing it for you. So you want to make sure that you hire out for those things. And also as an entrepreneur, especially a solopreneur or a small business person, you are the CEO of your company. You do not have enough hours in the day to do everything in your business as far as flyers, marketing, things like that. Social media. Social media is huge and social media marketing is huge. It was a big load off of my, my mind and my plate and my day when I was able to hire someone to help my company do social media marketing. That is, was my thing. You might be great at it, that might be what your business is. But you want to hire out for those things that you, you just don't have a neck for. Or sometimes you might have a neck for it, but you might not have time to do it. I'm an accountant by trade my corporate career, because we talk about the fact that I came out of corporate, I have a master's in accounting. Guess what I don't have time to do? Accounting. Yeah, I can check it, but I do not have time to do the books because I'm busy being the CEO and being creative and, and, and connecting and coaching and doing those things. So guess what? I hire that out. And before I did that, I was spending so many hours just doing work, doing work, doing work. I barely slept, I barely ate because I was so busy trying to be an entire company by myself. So the next thing that you want to 
um, learn and or or that I've learned and I wish I knew in business is that everything is negotiable. <laughs> and it is. Everything is negotiable with knowing what your cutoff is for that negotiation, what you are not willing to take. And so when you're in business, there are some times where you have a service or a product that you have and someone else has a service or product that they have and it would behoove you to barter for those services. I'll provide you with this service in exchange for that service. But you wanna make sure that the services that you're giving is equivalent to the services that you're providing, that, that you're being provided with. Let me say that again, just to make sure it's clear. You want to make sure that the services that you're providing is equivalent to the services you'll be receiving. There you go. So you wanna make sure that you do that. Also, at the same time, when you are doing your services and packages, I said before that I don't provide services unless I receive the payment um, for the services. That is negotiable. You have people who will go into a payment plan with you. And so they will agree to pay. You will have a certain amount, or at least I do, that they have to pay up front. And then you write a contract for the remaining amount. Number one, you have something in writing that these people promised you that they have signed. Number two, it's a document that if they do not do it, it is legally enforceable. You still want to weigh your options because is it worth you going to court for? But you have something in writing to say, you agree to do this. Because again, people lie. People will say, oh, I never said that I was gonna pay you X amount of dollars. I only said I was gonna pay you the money that I paid you up front. That is the amount that I said I was gonna pay you. But if you have something in writing that they signed to say that they paid it, you can at least say, well, no, you did say you would pay me this up front, but this is how much you said you would pay me, you know, in, in 30 days or two weeks or two months or whatever, because you'll be surprised how many times people's memory will come back and come back clearly once you show them that piece of paper that they have signed. So that is um, what I thought I've learned um, over that. The next one is, usability over design. You can have a system that is designed with all the bells and whistles, but if you do not know how to use it, or if it's not feasible for you to use it in your business, guess what? It's a waste of time, it's a waste of your money. Every year I went through systems that may have been great when I first got it. So don't, don't get me wrong, when you first get it, it may work wonders for your business. But then you find over the year that you've outgrown the tool, the tool no longer works for what you need it to work for, or it could be that it sounded wonderful and you had great uh, uh, reviews of it and rough referrals for it and it works for this person or this company, but you do it and it's just not a good fit. I even had to do that this year with a system that I looked at and I had not used for two years. The person that I bought the system for is highly respected. I highly respect, but I had to sit and say, this tool is, is collecting dust, is not being of use to me. It could be of use for someone else. And I had to let them know, I'm sorry, I just, this tool just does not work for me can you please deactivate this account? So you wanna make sure that you do that. Things also too is websites. You design this fabulous website and your clients can't use it or it's confusing or is uh, hard to navigate. You don't want to do that because it's not even just about your usability, it's about your client's usability. Because guess what? Someone goes to your website and they can't figure out how to use your website, they are leaving your website. They're not gonna to try to take the time to figure it out. So you wanna make sure that you have that usability. 
you want to build everything in your business with that sale in mind. So you want to build to sell. You want to build programs to sell. You want to build services to sell. You want to build your website to sell. You want to build your social media platform to sell, to sell you, to sell your skills, to sell your expertise. You want to build your reputation to be something that sells you. I write articles all the time for different platforms and it sells me not going out saying oh buy my product buy my service but it shows that i am an expert in my field which automatically sells me which will bring people to me which will bring people to my website the final tip and i'm sorry because i really did not number these the final tip what i would say that i wish i had learned when i first started business is go with your gut when it comes to your branding and i'm not talking about your your professional brand now i'm talking about your website your colors um you know your the language that you use based on your research based on what you know your clients needs are because I went off of research, I wanted these colors for my brand, which you will see later in the year. I am rebranding. Oh, yes. Um, and it's going to speak, Katrina. It is going to speak, Venture Ready. And I went off of someone when they designed, they told me, oh, this is these are the colors that you want. You don't want this color because this color speaks this. You don't want to have this color because this color speaks that. And so I ended up with a brand that did not reflect me. And I was sitting at the end of 2019 trying to figure out what to do. And I said, you know what? I need to rebrand myself. I said, this does not speak to me at all. And I hired a branding expert and she looked at my brand. I, this is unsaid, nothing said to her yet. And she just looked at my brand. We had the first meeting and she said, hmm, your, your brand is, is nice. She said, but I'm going to be candid with you. It does not speak to you. Like I've spoken to you. I have your personality um, in my mind and life, and this is not your personality. And I sat there and said, you're absolutely right. When do you start? I hadn't even hired her yet. But from that, I knew when she looked at that and was like, this is not your personality. Um, this looks like, and it, and it was real branded. She was like, this looks like something someone told you you were supposed to do. I said, yep. We started working. We went through different processes and things like that. And I selected the brand for me that fits me when i look at it it's wonderful and like i said it's, it's coming out um you know a little bit uh, later in this year um you'll start to see the branding um that i have uh selected and it speaks to me it speaks to my personality and yes it is still professional and so that's what i would say have someone who will work with you within your vision instead of telling you what your vision is supposed to be that is the biggest thing that I found in professionals and entrepreneurs when they come to me that later is that someone told them what they should do. And in their heart and in their gut, they knew it wasn't right. But it takes time out. It takes money uh, that you're spending now that you would not have had to spend or you would have spent in the beginning of your business that you won't have to do later if you just listen to what your gut is saying and have someone that supports you if you have someone who's not supporting your vision for your branding hire someone else find someone else find someone else no one can tell you what your color should be no one can tell you what your website should look like <laughs> um as far as the colors and things like that now usability yes I, I'm all for that. Tell me the usability and how to do that, the SEO and, and all of that. 
you can work with someone for that. But when it comes to the look and the feel of your website, the only thing that matters is your personality coming through and your clientele being spoken to and spoken for. And when your clients come to your website, they say, yes, that is my brand. So that is all I have for you on today. I hope that you have found this an awesome teaching and something that you will take with you as you start your business. If you're already in your business and some red flags came up while I was talking, you can always change. If you want to have business coaching, executive coaching, you can contact me at info at VentureReady.net. You can call me at 888-712-4956, toll free or 610-623-0163. That is the local number. You can leave a message on both and someone will get back to you in the next business day. If you have any questions or any comments, you can comment below on this and you will see me on YouTube, you will see me on Facebook, you will see me on this platform, and you will see me on all the other uh, social media sites like LinkedIn. But I say to you today, these are the things that you should look for and some other things as well because I don't, everybody's business is different, so I don't know what your pain points will be. But in reflecting, you want to take a look and see what it is you thought you should have known before you started business or just look at these things, look at the things I'm telling you so you don't make the same mistakes and they have the same mishaps that Katrina did. Thank you again and have a good night.